Ah, finally, I found best sound ever. I want to use it right away. The only thing I need to do is just add a bit more of attack because it comes in a bit too strong, you know? So I'm just going to add some attack here. I'm going to add some attack. What the? What the? Actual. Hi everyone, Solar J here. Today I want to once and for all clarify the amp envelope on the analog rhythm and also on the digitact and syntact because it drove me crazy for a while. But I think that now I finally reached the enlightenment and I understand how it works. And I want to make this video for you guys, but also for me because I'm sure like next month I'm gonna be forgetting about it. So, so let's go step by step and try to understand exactly how this thing work. So the first thing to know is that this is not an ADSR envelope. It might be obvious, but it's an AHD envelope, attack hold decay envelope. On the syntax, you can choose between AHD and ADSR, but on the rhythm, you cannot. Let's have a look at the syntax just to get this out of the way. On the syntax, things look like they are exactly the same. No attack whatsoever. But actually, this is the trick. If you press twice the amp page, you can say, OK, envelope, please reset every time I press a kit, uh, trigger. So every time I press a trigger, no matter where the envelope is, it's going to start the attack phase from zero again. In addition, I can also decide to forget about this AHD thingy and just have a normal attack sustain decay that we are all familiar with. On the syntax, we can force it to reset every time you press a trigger or a trigger is played by the sequencer, but on the rhythm we cannot. So the attack phase, whenever you press a button or a trigger is played, will start not from zero, but from the value at which the envelope is at the moment you press again the key. Check this out. The first time that I press this trigger, it will go through the attack phase. Did you hear it? It was wham. You can make it even longer. But the, if I press it again, since it doesn't reset, it will start from somewhere here, right? In the sustain or hold phase. And then keep going with its envelope business, meaning stay hold until this value here the whole time and then go through the decay phase. The third thing to know, and this is the subtle tip, is this hold time. The hold time, it's basically the amount of time that you keep a note pressed. And Indeed, if you go all the way to the left, you go into the auto mode. And this, let's go to the zero attack, which is easier to, zero attack and zero decay, it's easier to demonstrate. The moment I remove my finger, the sound stops. Because the hold but phase of the AHD envelope is determined by me the moment I press and release the button. So if I have an attack phase, I can hold the button long enough for the envelope to go through the attack phase. And then when I release, it goes automatically into the decay phase, which I can also tune. Right? But what happens if, my, uh, if I keep the note pressed for a short time so that the attack does not finish? You see, I release and the decay phase is triggered before the envelope actually reached the maximum value. So I have to hold it for much longer if I want to go to the maximum value of amplitude and then decay. Things are sta slowly start to make sense, aren't they? The fourth thing to know is that once you now know the hold 
in auto mode is that when it's not in auto mode, you need to be careful to what values you will give it. Because check this out. So if I put it very, very short, it's as if I do in the auto mode, it's like I do this. You see? And if I press play, you know, and play this sequence, I can make it shorter, make it longer. So you've seen that now I was playing at the edge of the two triggers so that the sound ended just before the new one came in. And if I don't, if I just make it too long, it will feel like a kind of a continuous sound. And here's the subtlety, because if now I add a, a tuck phase like this, only the attack values that added up to the hold values do not exceed the space between two triggers will actually produce the result that we expect so that they have some kind of attack phase like in a normal ADSR that resets but since this doesn't reset whenever you do this too fast or your triggers are not spaced enough for the attack phase plus the hold phase plus the decay phase to roll out completely before the other note is triggered, you will have some weird behavior that drove me crazy for a long time, like I showed at the beginning of the video, right? You want the note to start slowly, but since the envelope is not finished, it will start from wherever it is. So check this out. So like this, it's zero, zero attack. Now I can add attack, but if I add too much, between the two triggers, the envelope does not have time to finish, to go back to zero, right? So what is actually happening here is that you start pressing the key here and you're gonna keep it pressed for the hold time. Let's say 40 in this case, 35. But this diagram is confusing because it seems like Okay, it's gonna stay up for 35, whatever this unit is, after the attack phase is reached. But that is not true. The attack phase has to be included in this 35. So not only I have to pay attention to the distance between two triggers if I want the envelope to reset, but I also have to take care that my hold time, so the time that I keep it pressed, is longer than my attack time. Otherwise, I'm never gonna reach the maximum. Check this now. Now the attack is 31. The, the hold is 35, and we're going to reach the maximum. If I make it too short, the decay phase, which happens when I release the key, will happen too fast, so that it's basically going to go up. Here's the maximum, say, it's going to go up to a certain amount, and then go down immediately, actually, because here there's zero decay. And then it's going to restart from zero, but go up only until that value that is dictated by the hold time. So the hold time should be smaller than the distance between two triggers or the time that you press the button twice if you want the envelope to reset, but should also include the attack time and the decay time, but let, we'll see that later. So like this, you see, it's rolling out completely. And like this, it's too short. So the decay phase up and too, too fast. Now what happens if I add some decay? If I choose my values carefully, I can make the whole envelope roll out completely between two triggers. But if I do this, now the attack phase is gone because every this means that you keep the, the thing pressed for short, so like this. Let's put in note now. You do like this. Right? So you keep it just for a little bit and then the decay phase starts immediately after the attack phase. And then if you press it again, the attack phase 
will start from that value and try to reach the maximum. But since the decay phase is very long in this case, it's already near the maximum. So you don't hear the actual attack. So you need, if you want to hear the attack, you need to make the envelope reset, which doesn't do it automatically. So you need to allocate the attack plus the hold and the decay time so that they are within two triggers or within two press notes. So at the beginning of the video, I had something like this, right? A very long decay time. So this is never gonna stop. It's gonna go forever. So forget about your attack because the attack is always gonna start from here, from the maximum. If I make it much shorter, the attack can actually take place. Decay. The last thing to know is that when the whole time is put to auto, but you have a sequence like this, then the length, so how long you keep it pressed, is dictated by this length parameter. So if I put this for this trigger, I put it very long, it's gonna roll out for very long. Okay, let's recap because this is quite a mess, in my opinion. The envelope does not reset by its own. So if you have an incredibly long decay time, forget about the attack because the attack is gonna start already from the maximum whenever you press the button. So in order to make the envelope reset, you need to make the attack plus hold plus decay time short enough that they, it, the whole envelope plays out between two triggers or between two key press, so like this. If I do, you know, it doesn't have time to finish, but like this, yeah. Very nice. If my whole time is too long, also it doesn't work because it's gonna always start from the maximum. It's just, I'm keeping it and then I'm keeping it again. It doesn't have the time to go down. And so another thing to keep in mind is that your hold time should always be larger than your attack time. Otherwise you're never gonna reach the maximum, no matter what, even if you have. And things get worse if you put, of course, a longer attack time, right? Like this, you don't hear nothing, right? Because you keep it for a short time, the attack goes a bit up, then you release it, the, re the decay phase, also very short, happens, and then the envelope restarts again from zero, but only have the time to go this far, let's say, you know, somewhere here. This brings me to the end of this video. This is everything you need to know about the amp envelope on the analog rhythm in order to avoid mental insanity and keep your mental health just a decent state. That said, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I wish you happy enveloping, and I'll see you next time.